So I'm going to start by going back to September 19th, 2012. It actually started with kind of a regular but pretty awesome day for me. I had gotten up early and met some buddies for a, a mountain bike ride on the North Shore. We call them Dawn Patrols. And it was a super sunny, awesome day. The trails were like mint as they are in September. And then I, I whistled home, got on my road bike, rolled to work, had an awesome day at work. Um, work's kind of really busy and fun and lots of energy. And I was uh, getting to around 5.30 and it was time for me to get home. So I was walking towards the gym and I, I, lo I love that. Um, for me, the, the rhythm that really worked for me in that era of my life was uh, busy days, lots going on. And then this moment of um, uh, being alone on my bike, a little bit of sort of med forced meditation, uh, solitude. And then I get home, I have four kids at home. At this time, my youngest was six. And so it was a four, uh, three boys and a girl. So it was this really busy, frenetic, but different energy. So I, I love the sort of harmony of those two worlds, punctuated by this moment on a bike where it was nice and calm. So here I was getting on my bike, excited to get home to see my kids. And I'm rolling down the block. And uh, you know, the world had a, a different plan for me. I wasn't going to get home quite, that, quite the way I thought to that night. So I was seven blocks from the office and I got smoked by a car. I got run over um, and I'm laying there at some point uh, post that. There's fire trucks, the traffic stopped, um, uh, ambulance. And I'm thinking, this is what you hear on the news. I'm like, I'm totally fine. But this is the kind of thing you hear on the news. Like, I hope that ride is okay. But I, I was sure I was completely fine. So they, they load me into an ambulance, take me to the hospital, and I, I did an awesome job of convincing them that I didn't need a CT scan, I was totally fine, let me go. <laughs> and, and, they, and they bought it, so I went home. And it turns out, in the end, I, w I wasn't actually fine, but it really took me a week to figure it out, that I had a pretty serious brain injury, a, a, a pretty significant concussion. Um, so the day before, you know, the, on, the, on the morning of the 19th, I, I could spend 10, 12 hours at work having a blast and wake up the next day with tons of energy and get right back at it. And then afterwards, I could, I could sort of eke out two hours, maybe three hours, and they were really low productivity hours. And then I was just smoked, maybe for the day, maybe for two days. And before the accident, I loved being with my kids. They, they brought me so much happiness and joy. But afterwards, I couldn't really be around my kids in the same way. And, and it was so heart-wrenching. My, my six-year-old, first of all, in, there's in a house and everyone's talking at once and that kind of multitasking was just torture for, for my brain. But being around my six-year-old, it just killed me. So it was heart-wrenching not being able to spend time with your kids. And so that was my new reality and it hit me so fast. And I, I had to figure out how to adjust to it. But my way to adjust to it was completely deny that anything was going on, just try and charge through it. So I showed up at work, I took one day off I, I, the accident happened on a Thursday, I took a Friday off, and I flew to Calgary on Monday for work, um, like nothing was wrong. And I kept getting comments from people like, y you're not actually making sense. <laughs> you're confusing us. Um, so I, I, I had a lot of caring people around me, giving me really great feedback. Um, and one of the things I got into really early uh, is I, one of my colleagues, Kat, who happens to be sitting right there, <laughs> Um, sat down with me early on and said, okay, we're going to do an exercise here. And we, we took a couple weeks on my calendar and we literally printed it out and cut it out. It was a little arts and craft project. And we went through and we said, uh, this task here, does this give you energy or take it away? Uh, that took it away. And we went through systematically through everything I would do in a day and we figured out what gave me energy, what took it away. And then we synthesized that and we looked at our team around us and we figured, okay, how are we going to sort things around? And we, we, we rejiggled the, everyone's roles and changed accountabilities. And we gave that a try for a little while. And it was better, but it wasn't quite there. So we did another one. What gives you energy? What takes you away? And went through the same exercise. And then resorted again. Tried that for a while. Learned from that. Wasn't quite right. Tried it again a third time, the same exercise. And eventually we got to the point where um, I could show up at the, and if I managed my energy well and I, I did I avoided the wrong things. I could actually come into work and stay on the safe zone of my symptoms. And the company was running, effect was running effectively. So it was this amazing example of you know, support um, and having great teammates who care for you. And, and it was a great example of uh, the wonderful things we love about our culture at Habanero coming to life. But what I, the reason why I bring that story up, because it was an amazing example of, or amazing opportunity for me to get super crystal clear about how my strengths come to life and the things that I'm passionate about. And so 
a lot of people work on these exercises. You can do journaling, you can do different tasks, and, and it's a way to get to the core of what, what, it, what it is in life that you're really good at, what feels natural, where do you experience that flow state? You know, how do your strengths come to life? What are you most happy doing? But with my brain injury with the concussions, it wasn't sort of like, well, I do this, and I'm kind of tired, and it bums me out a little bit, but it's okay. When I did things that weren't a good fit for me, I had crushing symptoms. I, had, I got dizzy, my vision started to become impaired, I, I get feeling nauseous. Like, my body was this amazing uh, uh, indicator of what was working for me and what, where my talents lay and where it didn't. So it was an incredible opportunity uh, that you know, nature had reformatted itself to be a, um, a strength-finding machine for me for a little while. So that, that was this great gift that came, came from the concussion. Um, a little while later, maybe a year later, I was, I was, uh, we were doing a project with a peer mentoring group that I was with. And so the idea, the drill was we were going to create these things called lifeline. And what a life, has anyone done a lifeline? Yeah, nobody. What a lifeline is, is you go back to birth and you chart the highs and lows of your life. And you, it's a great way to describe what your life's all about to other people. But it's also a great way to look at the patterns in your life and what, and how they've kind of, uh, um, forged uh, the things that you believe in and who you are. So I was really excited about doing this exercise. I sat down to start working on it. I realized, yeah, I don't actually remember anything. My, my history was this dense, foggy matter that I couldn't get myself into. I couldn't penetrate. It, it freaked me out. Like I couldn't remember dates or names. Um, like a lot of my history was just fog. So I crowdsourced it. I, uh, I wrote, reached out to my parents, to my sisters to friends, to old friends I hadn't talked to for a while. And people were super generous. They sent me emails with pictures and stories and names and dates. Like dates were the worst. I couldn't, I couldn't put anything on a timeline. Um, but I was able to compile all this information, 99% uh, of it from other people. And this, this visualization, super nerdy visualization here, is the result of that. And what was really cool about that is obviously I wouldn't have had to have reached out to all these people if I wasn't injured or in, in this state at that time. So that, that was really cool. But what was neat about it was this weird opportunity to look back on your life and who you are and your history from a completely objective opinion. It was like reading a book about my life that I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. I didn't know this. And I was discovering all these things with this different objective perspective that I could never have had if I didn't have this injury. And what it allowed me to do is really find the cause and effect relationships between the things that happen in my life, the, the highs and the, the privileges and the lows and the struggles and how those added up to, to the things that actually mattered to me, how those things amounted and built my value system and the things that I cared about. So it was this great opportunity to get really clear about, about the values. And I got really clear, for example, on the highs about how important relationships were and making an impact on people and being impacted by other people, particularly in, the, in people's professional lives. And that, th those, those things were, were emerging as a really clear theme for me through this. So I had these really two wonderful opportunities presented uh, through the good graces of, uh, of uh, the driver who chose to run me over that day. I don't think he chose to run me over. It was an accident. Um, and, and my mental model of personal purpose is the idea that w when you're living your personal purpose, you're doing the things that you deeply care about, but you're doing them in a way that brings your unique gifts, your unique talents to life. So to me, personal purpose is that sweet spot between those two things. And that's what I got out of, out of these experiences that were sort of gifts from my concussion. I got much clearer on, on what I really cared about, and I got much clearer on how I need to operate in a way that where I'm performing the best and being myself in, a, in the most complete way. So it was, it was super educational for me. And so moving ahead a little farther, um, it seems funny to be up here speaking with a picture of me speaking behind. It just, it just occurred to me that's really weird. <laughs> I stand in front of that. Um, um, lost my train there. So wheeling ahead a little farther, we as a company, um, I was, I was coming out of my, con my concussion symptoms were abating. I was able to stay in a conversation for longer. I was able to actually uh, knit ideas together to cogent thoughts. These, these, it was a very exciting time for me. And as a company, we were, we were starting to, to shift and, and uh, change, think about the next 15 years of our existence. So we were thinking about a big transformation. It was thrilling and so amazing for me to start to have my brain capacity back to get involved in that. Once it's gone, 
and you bring it back, you sure take, you don't take it for granted anymore, let me tell you. And so as an organization, we were making this change, and I was able to contribute to it, and it was very exciting. And we, we, we had this moment where we wanted to get the whole company together to talk about our new direction. So we flew people in from Tr Toronto and Calgary and these different places, and we had to spend a day together. And in that one-day conference, I had the opportunity uh, to get up in front of everyone, and uh, I had an opportunity that I've never had in my life with this, with this sort of um, clarity. I had an opportunity to talk about what I really cared about and talk about uh, in an indirect way, what I'd really learned from about my personal purpose and share with everyone really what, I'm, what mattered to me and how that affected the aspirations for our organization. So it was an amazing moment for me because not only did I realize then that I had gained so much clarity over, through the experience of, of the last three years, three years of concussion, um, but I realized that I gained tons of confidence in, in who I am and what I care about. And that, that was the, the coolest thing about it. And this is the, I still think of this as the, the best work day I've ever had in my life. And we'll see what happens next. But it was an amazing day. But for me, I really felt like I could own my, pur my purpose. I could stand up in front of a room of people I loved and respected. Uh, and I could be, really be open with it. And I'd never been able to be that open and clear about it. So it was an amazing experience for me from that, from that perspective. So as a company, um, before this change, we were known as a really great place to work with an amazing culture, and we spent a lot of time building and working on that, and we helped some of our clients in, in limited ways with that. But after, after this change, we had dedicated ourselves to helping organizations build great workplaces just in the same way that we worked on it for ourselves. And for me, that idea aligns and resonates so beautifully with my personal purpose, which I rephrase you know, at will, but I generally talk about it as, as me being very passionate about the idea that in order to live full, complete, fulfilling lives, we need to, we need to have professional lives that contribute to that. We need amazing career experiences for us to live complete, full lives. And so that, that's my sense of personal purpose. And what's been really cool about this and getting clear about it and the experience I've had is, is it's given me a lot of energy and opportunity to help other people through this journey. And the best part about it is you don't actually have to have a concussion to get there. There's other ways to do it. And if that was funnier, it would have been a nice way to close, but it wasn't, so there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>